we are now spending over £5 billion a year out of the £12 billion budget on older people aged over 65. And it's very important with the ageing of the population that the quality of our services as well as the availability of services locally is enhanced. It's estimated that the number of people aged over 75 in Scotland over the next 20 years will double. It's important not just to ensure that people have longer lives, but that those longer lives are healthy lives. Reshaping care for older people is a very good example of where we uh, take a cross-government view on all of these matters. For example, I used to be the housing minister and we looked very particularly at the special needs of uh, people, older people in relation to housing. Similarly in transport, Keith Brown as the transport minister has a very specific focus on the particular needs of older people. Obviously the concessionary fares policy is a major element of that. One of the great benefits of integrating health and social care is that instead of older people having to deal with the health service and the social care services separately, they should be able to deal with them as one service. We've already got partnerships operating in the Highlands and in West Lothian, which has been up and running for eight years, and in East Renfrewshire, for example. We want to have those partnerships running right across the country uh, so that we bring under one roof, under one partnership board, all the primary care services uh, and links into acute care on the health side along with the social care services. I was in East Ayrshire last week and uh, I was looking at a pilot project which is involving telecare. Now we were sitting in Kilmarnock talking to an elderly lady in Dalmellington, 15, 20 miles away and she uh, has been helped by her local GP and the local social work department uh, to be able to stay at home uh, over the last year and a half. Now she's got a number of conditions, COPD, heart condition and various other issues, health issues, and she obviously needs a high level of social care as well. Now up until a year and a half ago she was constantly in and out of hospital and that disrupted her social care but it also was not good for her because it didn't help her health any. Since she's had the telepod in, she's never been back in hospital and uh, in terms of planning her home helps, her social care, uh, that's done in conjunction with the GP, the GP's nursing staff and so on. And every morning she talks to somebody in the GP surgery, she measures her own blood pressure and it's recorded in a computer that she works at home. And there's 20 patients in that pilot alone doing that. And overall it's reduced the number of admissions to hospital for older people in that pilot project by 70%. And that's a very, very good example of where you've got integration working on the ground very practically, uh, helping people with both their health and their social care needs. The reality is that uh, budgets are being slashed by the UK government across the board so that many of the known health and social care support services that are needed are under pressure. And even although we are passing on the Barnet consequentials, clearly that's dependent on what percentage rise is decided in London. Uh, that will determine the percentage rise in our budget. And obviously the increase in budgets is very tight compared to the increase in demand. And the big issue about older people is, um, as people get older, um, they tend to have more than one thing wrong with them, what they call in the jargon comorbidities. Now, when I was growing up as a boy in Ayrshire in the 50s and 60s, uh, usually the, the, the average lifespan was about 70, 72. And people used to um, suffer in, in the 60s and early 70s from one condition. Nowadays, because people are living much longer, they tend to acquire a range of illnesses. So they might have COPD as well as a heart condition, as well as blood pressure and cholesterol issues, as well as orthopaedic type issues. So very clearly it's that comorbidity that represents a major challenge. And I think, for example, we need, and we are looking at um, the, the journey of people through the health and social care system with comorbidities. Because if you, for example, have a fall, and you're an older person living alone and you have a fall, and you're taken into hospital, 
uh, you're probably going to be taken into the orthopaedic department and be seen by the orthopaedic surgeon. But you actually probably should also be seen by the consultant dealing with COPD or the consultant dealing with heart conditions or the geriatric consultant who looks at the total person. So we're looking at how we can improve the patient pathway uh, both in the community and in the hospital. I'm very keen uh, to promote the importance of some of the kind of activities provided directly by Age Scotland. Uh, social interaction amongst older people is extremely important. Avoiding isolation amongst older people is extremely important. That's why we are so committed to keeping the concession affairs scheme. The importance of it to older people isn't so much the money yeah. per se, it's actually it allows them to stay in touch with their friends, stay in touch with their family, and all of that is part and parcel of making sure their mental well-being as well as their physical well-being is as good as it can be. Uh, but similarly, funding uh, informal groups, funding uh, the ability of older people to attend computer classes, for example, through our education budget, all of that is extremely important. I have a friend whose mother is well into her 80s. Her husband died a few years ago, and uh, my friend was extremely worried about her being isolated. They bought her a computer, introduced her to YouTube, and she's actually, I mean, it's like having a dog. She, YouTube is her company, her friend, her pal. But it's also encouraged her to go out and about in her own community and to meet other older people and to socialise much more. So all of these kind of uh, support activities are extremely important in preventing unnecessary isolation, depression. You know, one of the things that people don't appreciate in Scotland is that far more older people in Scotland suffer from depression than suffer from dementia. And these kind of activities are extremely important in avoiding depression. Even the International Monetary Fund now is saying the cuts agenda being pursued in London is going far too far. And I think it's had a huge damaging effect on the quality of public services throughout the UK, which is why we want, of course, not to have our money decisions determined in London. I'm very worried about the impact of the bedroom tax um, because I think that is going to be very disruptive to our communities which will impact the whole community including older people. I was in Edinburgh at the East End uh, Centre. I met the team who meet every week and uh, the social work department was there, uh, the, nursing the district nursing service was there, uh, the GP services were there, the acute services were there. Because I was there and because of data protection we actually had an imaginary case of an 87 year old lady living alone, no family in Edinburgh, with a daughter in London uh, who had until recently had no real health problems but she's got people coming in twice a day, home health type services. But in recent times there's been signs of dementia, there's, uh, the house has not been as clean as what it was before and so on and so forth. And the discussion right round the table about coordinating the support for this imaginary older woman, but probably fairly typical uh, of the kind of cases they're dealing with. Now that just wouldn't have happened two years ago, never mind five or ten years ago. And the quality of provision now that's in place as a result of that happening, which is a direct result of the change fund, I think is a very, very good example of practical on the ground improvement, dramatic improvement in the quality of services. A number of things driving this agenda, the partnership and integration of services is driving it, the change funds are driving it, the sheer practicalities of the budget challenges and the challenges of providing services for older people and the huge increase in the number of older people, the new technologies, the new treatments, the new ways of doing things, all of these things put together represent a huge challenge. So we can't afford to stand still. We've got to keep moving telecare, telehealth, telesocial care. All of these things are absolutely moving ahead at a pace. Now I would like to see them moving ahead at an even faster pace than what's actually happening and we're looking at how we can do that. But there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that we are on a path of major improvement in the provision of health and social care in Scotland.
I think it's extremely important that older people do have their say, and I don't think there's any one single challenge, but for example, one of the things we are doing is trying to empower uh, people much more and to make the services much more person-centred. And the whole concept of what in the jargon is called co-production. Part of co-production means that you're not told uh, what service you're going to get, you're consulted about what service you're going to get and you participate in the decision making. And a very, very good example of that is the introduction of self-directed support and the new act that's coming into force. I'm extremely keen to maximise the take-up of self-directed support because that empowers older people and disabled people in particular on what they want, what they see as their priority and not have the men and women in suits come and tell them what they need to do. They decide for themselves. I think there's a sort of general feeling that actually the answer to this these days isn't so much appointing a commissioner, it's actually to make sure that the services are provided in the right place at the right time to the quality that's required. Participation of older people is much greater than it was when I was in, going to introduce that bill. I think we now have extended remits for the parliamentary commissioners uh, dealing with complaints. We have a more proactive complaints procedure both in the National Health Service and now a revised procedure for local authority complaints in relation to social care, for example. The great thing that people of a pension age can bring is experience, expertise, um, that a lot of them have still got a lot of energy left and a lot to contribute and they've got free time uh, and they want to, you know, most of them want to be out and about, they want to be part of society and not seen as something uh, separate. Uh, so I think they've got a huge contribution to make and they are making a huge contribution. I mean, when you look at the provision of voluntary services in and around health and social care, um, then a lot of the people providing those voluntary services are older people. Uh, when you look at uh, some of the uh, organisations like your own, um, it's older people who are driving those older th those organisations, and that's the way it should be. You know, the idea as in the old days that you know because you're old, then you sit at home at the fireplace and watch the telly. These days are gone. Because people are living not just longer lives but healthier lives, they're fit mentally and physically, many of them, to do a great deal and to make a huge contribution and that's what we want to encourage. A lot of them don't you know, have major health problems or don't have social care needs, but our priority is to make sure that ones who do get that quality of service to allow them to live as active a life as they possibly can. That's the first priority and that's where we can make the greatest contribution. But secondly, through our support for voluntary organisations and for the third sector in particular, I think the third sector has got a huge role to play in um, the provision of a whole range of services. And uh, many of these are what are called the kind of soft services, such as uh, clubs, activity groups, um, and things to encourage, you know, uh, lifelong learning courses and the like, uh, directed uh, at older people as, in some cases, as part of a wider attraction to a wider population. Uh, so I, I think all, you know, whether, whether your function is education, housing, health, social care, transport, sport or whatever, uh, then every one of us uh, should be encouraging older people to participate in all of these services uh, and to give uh, back uh, to the community their expertise, their experience and encourage them to be a real part of the decision making process instead of just being the receiver of services, they should be the drivers of services. The Fabian Society had just produced a report saying tax pensioners to pay for the younger people. Uh, number one, I think that kind of strategy is very divisive. Uh, and secondly, it's not about older people versus younger people. It's about better off people uh, making a bigger contribution to help the less well off people. And it doesn't matter whether you're a better off person in your 20s or 30s or in your 70s or 80s. If you're relatively well off financially, then my view is, yes, you should be paying your fair share uh, and a higher proportion of your income back into the kitty to help those who are less well off. 
But to present this in terms of a generational struggle, I think is extremely damaging, extremely divisive, and not clever at all, and it doesn't reflect the true situation. You know, by any measure, we still have nearly a fifth of our pensioners living on or near the poverty line in Scotland. The idea that we should de redirect resources from those people because they're older people to help younger people is absurd. Uh, the people we should be redirecting resources from are the better off sections of society to help the less well-off sections of society and age shouldn't come into it.